Hi, my name's John. Welcome to a five year review of this extreme plasma table. It's hard to believe I've had the table for five years, but I have. In the five year, it's done a lot of work. It's cut from sort of half inch plate to real thin stainless steel, brass, aluminium, copper. It's actually had three sets of slats. That shows how much work it's done. And it's due another set, and it wants a real good clean up. This table started off as one of the prototype tables, a little two foot square table. I had it for a while and then we increased its size to six foot by two foot, which is easy because you're only changing the side rails. There's not a great lot of work involved in it. It's had software upgrades and it's now got the modified carriage on with spring loaded wheels. It's, it's done the job for me. It's done it very well. I've had one new torch and I blow up one Artec plasma cutter not long after I got it and the one that's on there now has been on for four years and it hasn't missed a beat. The table came with a water table, that's a trough and a leaf that you fill with water. I used that for a while and then I gave up with that and I put a big fan in the centre like a downdraft fan and I've got a big extractor fan on the wall. Uh, plasma cutting's dirty, horrible, messy stuff. You tend to stay outside of the building when you're cutting, it's just in a small building. I would like a bigger table, I would like a four foot square table, but I, I just haven't got the room. And being two foot by four foot means I can get an eight foot sheet of steel, my friend cuts them into four bits, and I use a four by two straight on the table. The PC side of things is given no problem at all. That's the monitor, stand and keyboard. I've got the PC in a little box up here just to try and keep some of the horrible smoke and crap away from it. And I've got the plasma cutter underneath it. Um, the software was upgraded by Rob. He did it remotely. I didn't even have to take the computer down. He come online on my computer and did it all through the magic of the internet. This head's got drone programs in it, but I normally draw upstairs in the house in the bedroom where it's nice and warm and comfortable. Little memory stick, come down here, plug the memory stick in, and away you go. That's the fan I've got in the wall that pulls straight outside. It's quite a high floor fan. This is the business end of the machine, the cutting torch. And you can see there's a lot of dirt on the runners. These are stainless steel. It wants a real good clean up. All these bearings want cleaning. It hasn't been neglected. It's just had its arts worked off. That's all, it's, that's all you can say about it. The only issue I had with the table is this plug here. That was a, a connector plug on there and I didn't check it. It, it came loose and it melted the plug. And all we're doing is join the wires together. Uh, the table needs a rebuild, it wants rewiring. But like I say, it's five year old and it's, it's in constant use. It has done an awful lot of work. You can see that the state of the slats, and these have been turned over twice. Uh, they really are past the point of no return. Rob sent another set up, so I'm going to put a new set of slats on it. And I'm also going to clean the table out because there's a lot of crap and metal in there. And I'll show you how I've set up my extraction system. If I'm cutting thicker material, I've got two pieces of square section of steel. I put them on there. Then I'll put the thick material on and cut inside the two bits of steel. Uh, just because these are now that, that far worn. They've just done, done that little bit. They've done really well, but it's time for new ones. I mean, one thing about the table is this was one of the first tables built. And you could take any part of this and it would go straight onto a new table. That all made exactly the same drones. Okay, so we need to remove these slats. I'm going to cut them up just to make it easier to get them off the table. What we'll do, we'll plug the grinder in and it'll work much, much better. We normally do. This is the end of the table that's done most of the work, as you can see by all the, the bits and pieces. It's cut stainless, has copper, brass, you name it, it's in here. This is the 
cover I've got to have me extract a fan, it's obviously that's covered as well, so we'll dig some of the crap out of here and I'll show you how I've got that set up and how that works. Yeah, this, this originally was a water table that was filled with water, uh, which does work quite well to suppress the to suppress the dust and fumes. And this is probably it'll be two months worth of cutting it in here. Two months since I clean it out. Here's a bit of 10 mil stuff that's been cut. Stain this. I probably wanted that at one stage. This is the hole that the fan's connected to. I've got it running at the minute. You can feel the draft and you can push stuff down until it disappears and gets blown straight outside. It's a plastic tube and it hasn't melted the tube because there's that much air going through, it just pulls things straight outside. I'll show you the fan. Underneath the table, that's a big duct, I think it's 8 inch, like I say, it's never melted, it's been no problem at all. Onto a big booster fan, it blows it straight outside. 240 volt fan, it really does move a lot of air. You can see on the rails, there's a build up, a, well a crap reed, I suppose it's been crushed in by the rollers. It comes off quite simply. That's all it takes just to clean them back up. And then they're to blow all the crop out of here. I'll clean all the rollers as well. You don't put lubricant on here. You could put a dry lube on, but the likes of WD-40, all the crap would just stick to it. As I say, that it hasn't been neglected, it's just been used a lot. And it's withstood all the work I've done on it. If it withstand me, it'll withstand anybody. These bearings are changeable, they're all easy to set up, easy to adjust. Been stainless steel, these box sections take no hurt at all. That's the original one off the two foot table, and these side ones are the ones that were replaced when we stretched it to four foot. Four foot is a much better size. The two foot square is all right, but obviously, four by two is a lot, lot better. We'll just carry on cleaning up and checking all these little nuts and bolts are tight as we go. You see the crap in there, like I say, airline. It's probably the best method. The bearings are all sealed so this won't do any harm. This was one of the best mods from the early table. It's got the, the, the stutter motor spring loaded so it keeps it pulled into place on the track, that made a, made a big difference. The tables have all changed all again. Now the new black ones are different again. Same principle, they're just built a lot stronger, stiffer. Obviously Rob's learned as, he's, as it's progressed because it's constantly, constantly changing. The torch is mounted on what you would call a friction device. So if you crash it, it just bends out of the way without causing any damage. It's so simple, but it just works. And all the nooks and crannies and all the little bits and pieces. This is brake cleaner, so it dries. You want to dry, as you know, your residue left. And I'll power the PC up. And we'll just park it up to send it to home. 
the machine comes up here and the micro switches turn the drives off and it parks itself up in the corner. That's its one point. I can tell it's running a lot smoother, it's a lot quieter. It did need a, a good refresh, a good clean up. Right, so that's it parked up and it's one point. Uh, we've got it fairly clean there now, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to put the new slats in and then we'll probably cut something. It's a little bit of a fiddle putting the, the slats in. Once you get a start, it's not too bad, but you need three arms to get the first one in. This is where they come all nice and clean. That consumables, that's exactly what they are, and they to be chopped up. You know, they, they do that job and then you turn it over. Like I say, I think this is the third or fourth set I've had in five years of like a lorry use. I think on the bigger tables, obviously the eight foot tables, you can make these yourself, you can cut them yourself. But the consumables, Rob, stocks them all and they're not a great lot of money. Mm. People say how long they last, well it depends on how much you use the bloody thing, obviously. If you don't use it, they last forever. Once it's together, it's very rigid, it, 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 uh, it locks itself together, it's like a jigsaw. So now it's, it's nice and stable where mine was all bent and rickety. It's doing the job quite nicely. I'm going to leave that baffle plate off there and see what happens. I don't think it'll be a problem to tell you the truth. There's that much volume of air going through there. The sparks haven't got time to burn anything. Here it is, one head shot ready to go rusty. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm really pleased my table is a bit more respectable now. If you have a look in the description box, there's a link to the Extreme webpage. Have a look on there, there's all the tables, there's various plasma cutters, Rob Wilson says as well, there's all the consumables, loads and loads of toys to look at. I can assure you that you won't find a more honest, straightforward businessman to deal with. He's got a passion for his business. It's as simple as that. It's a family business. Um, these tables, believe it or not, are built in the UK. They might use Chinese components and German and American components, but all the metal is folded, cut and welded in the UK. And not very many companies can say that. Anyway, thanks for watching.